Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to our WCTV Game of the Week here at Independence High School. I'm Paul Brees, along with my sidekick, partner in crime, Doug Capella. We have a good one for you. The Raptors coming down the road with a 4-1 record, taking on Independence Eagles in a, in a big region contest. Doug, what do you got? Well, you know, we got two big games this Friday night. You pick them. You got undefeated Nolansville going against Centennial High School, and then you got 4-1 Ravenwood only lost to, as we talked earlier, that little school out in East Tennessee called Alcoa. So Ravenwood, early test in the season, but then they've won four straight. Indy has played about 26 quarters of football in, in five games due to all of the overtime action that they've experienced so far. Their last one, they dropped to Centennial in overtime. Well, you talked about strength of schedule. I think Independence definitely has probably the more tested when it comes to right your extra football uh, so a close game maybe favors uh, an independence and uh, Scott Stidham team but Ravenwood been there done that right uh, they're no stranger to success at 4-1 they're only lost to Alcoa power in East Tennessee even though in 3A we talked about it earlier they're probably a really really good 6-18 if they, that's right if they chose to that's right so Truly a test here for both squads to kind of see what exactly their ambitions will be towards the end of the season. Ravenwood not really tested. I don't know if anybody really expected them to go into Alcoa and, and steal a victory there. And then they played a couple Metro schools, a couple Rutherford County schools, and they sit at 4-1. and one. And like we said, Independence just playing a ton of football and a much harder schedule early on. So if, we'll see. they got to play it on the field tonight. So if you've joined us, we see an option type, wing T esque type offense by Independence, and they uh, keep keep your uh, off balance. You were off balance a lot. <laughs> That's right. Defense definitely has to read the keys. Coach Will Hester, not a stranger to Williams County football, and second stint here at Ravenwood. So uh, here's a must third down right here for a, a conversion here for the Eagles. Well, if you caught the WCTV game of the week a few weeks ago, you saw Centennial and Independence square off in what was just an amazing contest. Independence ties it with about eight seconds left to go in the game, and then Centennial does come back and win it in overtime after an interception and on uh, Indy's first drive, and then Centennial goes ahead and punches it in. But just a great contest. They took Page three overtimes before losing to Page. I'm sorry, defeating Page in overtime. And then they took Franklin to overtime. So, again, beating a dead horse here. But they've played an awful lot of football early on. And they do get the first down there, first and ten. So, I'm sure Indy's going to try to shorten this game and run the clock. And there is a. Puts the ball on the ground. Recovers with about wow. a half a yard gain. So, lucky bounce there for the Eagles. And I guess that's the uh, risk, you, risk reward when it comes to the option. Well, and that pitch wasn't even close. Quarterback took a hit. The pitch landed in front of the ball carrier on the ground. So, Indy just lucky to get out of that one with uh, possession. So, the quarterback for the Independence Eagles, Luke McNeely, we've seen him. Uh, he can do it up with his legs and uh, occasionally does have a pretty strong arm. I think accuracy is uh, coming to question every once in a while, but can hit the big play occasionally. We saw that a couple times this season already. So out of the shotgun, they bring motion, and here oh, we go. He's wide we open. Cues it up. We just talked about the big play. Hits number 30, Luke McNeely, for a big gain. But that was Sorry, Bra Braxton Alexander. Yeah. Luke McNeely to Braxton Alexander. And the sophomore just uh, probably released off that tight end spot. And the linebacker, right, sometimes goes to sleep when they start keying in on that option. And they snuck him back there, and uh, Alexander with a nice catch. And I'm sure if the pass would have been on the run right there, he probably could have maybe taken it to the house. Uh, there's the workhorse for the Independence Eagles. I think that's Clay. Check that uh, Clay Davis, number 11 right there. He's done some big things we've seen on so far on WCTV. Number 11. One thing you'll probably see Independence – go to at some point is their inside trap play. They ran it a bunch against Centennial, and it worked repeatedly. I don't really don't know why they got away from it in that game. Ravenwood is a little bit bigger and more stout up front, and so we may or may not see it, but that was bread and butter just a few weeks ago. 
So second and nine here, McNeely, empty backfield. McNeely is a mobile quarterback. There's the jet motion there, comes in, has room on the outside, cuts it up, cannot split the defenders, but does get a first down. Gets about 17 on the play. Yeah, Braden Needham on the jet sweep, which is also kind of a risk uh, reward situation. You can lose two pretty quick, or you can pick up a big chunk, and right there, Needham got some blocking from his receivers. Well, and credit to the Indy play calling thus far. If they scripted these first bit of plays, because they are keeping this Ravenwood defense guessing. Option there that time, no good. Read well by the Ravenwood defense. McNeely there is going to get hit for about a loss of one. Yeah, Landon Gullett, number three right there on the uh, nice read off that option right there. You know, Doug, I couldn't tell, but it seems sometimes like the running back's kind of getting in front of McNeely right there. It's hard to pitch to him if he's in front of you. Yeah, it, well, you know, and it's funny, though, sometimes the officials would call an incomplete pass on that. If, if uh, right. So maybe that is the thought process of uh, kind of playing ahead of him right there. It is a crowded uh, announcing booth up here tonight. We <laughs> are shoulder to shoulder. So now you're going to see why there's not a whole lot of room up the middle for this Indy defense. You're talking about attacking the strength of that Raptor yeah. defense. Led by uh, zero, number zero, Jacob Thompson, the senior 6'3", 306 listed on the roster. A, so A svelte 306. And, and you know what? When, when you get to choose your number as a D-line and they give you zero, <laughs> you mean business. That's right. And he, you can see from up here, he is a big fella. And so I'm going to guess they're not going to try to soften up the inside of that Raptor defensive line. At least I wouldn't. Three wide for the Eagles here. Single back set. McNeely uh -oh. rolls left. Has room. He's going to take it on his own. Good open field tackle there. Tried to widen it out and met the athletic number 24. It's going to be Donovan Starr. It's going to bring up fourth and about 11. Fourth and 10 from the 20. Well, it looked like a screen was being set up because a lot of pressure came up front. They uh, kind of chipped the D-line, but they covered it well with the linebackers. It was not going to be had. So from the left, Hash is going to be Independence to try the 32-yard field, or excuse me, 38-yard field goal. Kick and, is up. It's got distance. No, wide, no good. Wide right. right. Yeah, so all for nothing, right? That's kind of disheartening. The Eagles mounted a great offensive series of first here. Couldn't get anything on the point, but do come up with a quote-unquote moral victory that knowing that, hey, we moved the ball pretty successfully. We kept them off balance. That's right. So now here come the Raptors offense, which is uh, – not short on size up front. No, no, and had to replace, right, uh, all-region quarterback Chris Parson. So just to give you an idea, up front, you got 71, Kyle Larkin, 6'4", 290, and 77, Cooper Midget, aptly named, at 6'4", 260. Well, speaking of... Uh, a, a small guy that can do it all, Carter Pace right there, 26, 5'8", 185. He is a known running back from around the county, and he, he is the guy that keep your eye on if you're a Raptor fan looking for somebody to punch it in the end zone. I don't know that Ravenwood is going to be as surprising as Independence. I think they're going to stick to what they do well, spread it out, let their athletes run up and down the field, and just like that, you have a little swing pass right there. First down to number eight. That's going to be Ben Hubbard. So the quarterback is uh, Femi Babaloa, the sophomore, 6'1", 188. From up here, looks like a pretty good-sized athlete. And, you know, you see Coach Hester with, going with the sophomore. He's thinking, man, if I can right the ship here, got two more years. So 26 already, that's going to be Carter Pace, a familiar name from yep. last year also. Carter Pace, strong runner, and he is going to be their workhorse this evening. 
as the Raptors are going to drive. And you can't go wrong with a last name like Balboa. I'm gonna, what's, what's, that's what we're going to go with tonight, Coach. Yeah, absolutely. Second and seven. So you want to see, are the Raptors just lulling this Indy defense away with a big play? They've run it up the middle and hit the perimeter. You're going to see if do they set them up for a, a bigger play. And here we go. Back to pass goes Balboa throwing deep. Oh. Maybe yeah. just a little bit of offensive pass interference there. <laughs> but just like that, he takes the deep shot about 25 yards downfield and not even close. Jude Scott on the defense right there. And I was, uh, you know, I was about to say, I felt like we were going to see uh, the first attempt for Balboa down the field, see kind of his arm strength, his accuracy. You know, I like the way Coach Chester, his first original pass was just kind of a swing pass, kind of get him loose. And that time, try to stretch the field. Now he's put into a third and seven situation. Well, and we'll see if they're just going to be content to give it to Pace here and see what he can get. They do. They hand it off. No, Balboa's going to throw. Oh. Has number nine wide open. Go oh, might have a hold downfield. No, he doesn't call it. A little bit of jersey there, but first down, Raptors. Yep. They faked me out on that one, Coach. Uh, I believe that Pace had it, but nope. Balboa keeps it, throws it to number eight. That's uh, actually number nine, I believe. Sol no, Sol uh, it's going to be eight. Sol Is it at Yeah, Ben eight? Hubbard, yep. Coach. Maybe, yeah, hey. I don't think that number nine is correct. I don't think that's a freshman down there. No, it's his junior, Flanker. There's number eight right there, Ben Hubbard. You're talked about. Hubbard ridden down by 33 on the Eagles defense. Quick tackle, Reese Pickering, outside linebacker, senior. Coach, I just can't get over the size of this Raptor line. I mean, 6'3", 6'4", 6'4". So Balboa out of the shotgun, single back set. It's got three wide. It's gonna, this is going to be a handoff to Carter Pace. He's going to get about three. I will say Indy up front's holding their own against a much larger offensive line. You'd think they could make some hay here with the size of that front, but two and three yards so far up the middle. Well, it's funny. It looks like left guard is uh, Riggs Hester, 5'11", 210, kind of hidden between the uh, left tackle and the you can't, center. He's like a crumb. You can't even see him next to them giants out there. There's Pace to the outside. That might be to the house. Has one man to beat, and he's going to be tackled well, at I, about the seven. I just figured out why Riggs Hester's out there. He came around that, and he, he pulled that time, and he just uh, sealed that outside for Carter Pace, which sprung him. That's right. He's more apt to be uh, on a double wing offense at that size yeah. than uh, this. But you're right. If you can pull and get out to the outside, that is a valuable asset on a play like that. Balboa takes the snap, keep, nope, hands it off to Pace, who's going to get about three. And, Coach, I can't believe they're at the five already because it feels like they've gotten two and three yards of play. Yeah. Two chunk plays, and here we are at the five-yard line. Well, we're almost the end of the first quarter, so don't blink. Both teams content to run the ball. Balboa to pitch out to Pace. Pace tries to get the outside. Indy closes the door. No thank you. Definitely a straight up, hey, we're going to give it to Carter Pace. Are you going to be able to stop him? The Eagles defense answers the call right there with two minutes remaining in the first quarter. Now we got a big third and five, so... Maybe Balboa does something with his legs to kind of string the play out a little bit, see if he can get something. I see we got our, our reach is extending all the way to Knoxville, Coach, as we got some fans out watching the game of the week this week. Interception, oh, interception. by Independence. That's for you, Miss Paisley Layton. There it is out in Knoxville. Pick. Independence has the ball at about the seven-yard line. And that Hunter Burton, I believe. Huge, huge turn of events there. Indy just gassed on defense. A couple good stands on the five-yard line. Well, Carter Pace right there put his hand up. He was like, I'm wide open. And then, nope. So a huge hold. Both teams, right? Missed field goal by Indy. The interception at the goal, near the goal line for uh, 
the Raptors, and we're scoreless here with 141 remaining. And so here we go. Indy takes over at their own five. Dangerous area for the Eagles to start on offense. Uh-oh, maybe a miscommunication Looks right like there. a busted play yeah. as McNeely handed it off to nobody. I think their uh, back went in the wrong way of motion. We do have a flag on the play. First one? First one. Trying to get the call here. Could be offsides as the flag was thrown. Be with the face, mask. face mask. That's going to be thank you very much for this Eagles offense. Now from the 5 to the 20-yard line. Coach, you just wonder with the much more physical Raptor offense, will this come into play in the third and fourth quarter on what is a cool night? What? Here in Spring Hill. I mean, we're talking about week six, right? I feel like it's pretty warm. McNeely with the keeper is going to try to get to the outside. Still running. Good uh -oh, pursuit there. Oh, it's going to be late hit. Nope. So it looked like a gain of two initially. It was a gain of about seven. McNeely, and I was going to mention this early, a very mobile quarterback. Will make plays with his feet. Does line up on defense from time to time at safety. The old two-way player. Sometimes you don't want your quarterback playing both ways. Not, a, <laughs> not, not at, at 6A. safety. And not at 6A football. You like it. Sometimes it has to happen, though. There's the motion. McNeely's going to roll out to his left. Yeah. That, that looked like it, nobody's open. I'm going to throw it into the ground. And Probably he would be correct. Yeah, smart. Smart play, don't force it right there, and uh, live another day for the Eagles. Third and four. Yeah, I mean, even if they're, if we're going to play field goal or a field position battles here, I mean, already just to get it out to around the 30, if they don't, you know, they're going to push Ravenwood back, barring any kind of blocked punt. You never know, though. They could get a big play here. Remember, they went over the middle, and it was wide open on that first drive. McNeely's going to be out of the pistol. He's looking over the middle again. Oh. Ill-advised, almost picked. Yeah. That time, the pass to the hash and just nothing there. And Lucky give, it was not picked. And give credit to Donovan Starr. Uh, you know, those D-backs want to lay, lay the wood sometimes to those uh, receivers, even though the pass is not even close. And he checked up. and. Uh, well, and that would have been a really unfortunate play because, you know, that, that would have been a first down, kept the drive alive. And this is what happens when you make a smart play. It's fourth down, and they're yep. going to have to punt from his own 15-yard line. And that's small things like that that sometimes the coaches realize that the fans are like, huh? Ravenwood ankles at the 35. Angled punt. Fair catch called for. Oh, He's going to fumble, ball. and the Eagles recover. Coach Ravenwood tried to slide in and catch it like a center fielder, and it just hit the ground after he dropped. First down, so huge play. The benefit of two early turnovers are these Independence Eagles. Cy Longley, 86 right there. Probably should have let it bounce. Maybe he was coached. Hey, say, listen, if you could catch it because of the turf, you know, that would save us about 10, 15 yards. To me, if you're after having to slide in and yeah, catch it, you might want to just let it go. Yeah. Especially when there's two de defenders right in your face. So... Field position really flops. Yeah. Eagles with motion. Hand off to number five. Gets the corner. Has five, six, eight. Almost to a first down, depending on the spot. Good gain of nine there for the Eagles. There's a flag on the play. Flag uh, on the play. What do you think? Holding? Uh, with a perimeter play like that, that's probably going to be a hold. We shall see. The Raptors, at least number one for the Raptors, Jaden Smitherman is all up in the uh, Indy huddle, so I'm guessing he thinks it's against the Eagles. The official call. Uh-oh. Oh, oh, you know, we just wow. talked about being smart. Yeah. Here you go. They have a nine-yard gain and then a personal foul that's going to knock them back 15. And now it's... It's not a first down. It's now a second down. 
So really a boneheaded play there because it was after the play, like you'd mentioned. So it's going to be second and about 16. First and long from the 46. Correction, second and long. So the Eagles, not a big play offense. So when you look at second and 16, that's kind of a big thing. McNeely out of the pistol, man in motion. He's going to try to attack the perimeter again, has some blocking. Oh. That's going to be a horse collar or not. No flag on the play. The official right there. You know, sometimes that jersey is one thing, but inside the shoulder pads is another That's right. thing. And, and, and it's hard to see up here, but it looked like he had that, and then it went from shoulder pad to jersey on the tackle. Slowed him down with the shoulder pad. And <laughs> had, it kinda, been, had it been Patrick Mahomes, it would have been a 15-yarder. Uh, hey, how about this, Doug? We were done with the first quarter at record time. Your score here at Independence High School for our WCTV game of the week, 0-0. Paul Brees, Doug Capella here on a warm week six. Yeah. We both wore pullovers. And, I don't know. Uh, I don't, yeah. Might have been a bad call. Yeah, it's okay. You know, interesting fact, the last time I was here, you'd think we were playing innings because it was 2-2 two to two at the end of the first. Uh, uh, WCTV uh, first. Uh, it might be a uh, state of Tennessee state first. Of Tennessee. <laughs> That's right. How about, um, how about these, you know, you talked about these big region contests tonight. This one, of course, in, in what most people think is a battle for second, right, the, the Bruins of Brentwood. Currently in the top uh, five in the 6A state football polls, and this is a battle of second. I think there's a three-way three-way race with Brentwood, Ravenwood, Independence. So this one definitely would have the upper hand right now. You go across the way, it's it's 6A, and the other kind of not the uh, second tier, right? Summit and Franklin. I feel like the winner of that game is going to. Maybe solidify themselves for the fourth playoff spot. Well, and as you said, Franklin probably the best five and or zero and five team in the state, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you saw you you called it last week, right? right? You felt like they gave Nolansville all they could handle. Nolansville was ranked, I think, third in the state in five A. So here so, we go back on offense. Third and about seven, a long seven. McNeely's going to look oh. deep. Whoops. Yeah, no flag. I think it was going to be catchable. Well, and he, he's looking for a flag at the 20, and the ball bounced in the end zone. Yeah, that's right. So I, I don't. <laughs> he had no chance to catch it. That's right. So here we go. Uh, we'll see if we can pin Ravenwood deep right here is what Independence is thinking. Well, if you remember, the interception happened, and they got the ball on their own five. Yeah. Punt it, fumble, recover. And so we're talking about a huge shift in field position here. For the Raptors, should they take over after this punt? Snap is back. It's going to be oh. an end over end. Oh, takes an amazing oh. independence bounce. That's about as close as the uh, coffin corner as you can get for a high school punter. Downs it at about the nine. Paul Brees checking the uh, local scoreboard here yeah. for us. See what we got in other regional action. I would imagine we may have the fastest moving football game up to this point well, with all of the run plays. Here we go. We talked about end of the first quarter, Summit High School 6, Franklin 0. We called a Summit game against CHS, and that was just a, not a good matchup. Centennial was cruised to an easy 42 to nothing victory in that one. So here we go. Raptors, two back set, swings it out to number eight. Eight's got some room on his feet. He's going to have a first down. That's going to be Ben Hubbard on about an 11-yard pass out of the backfield. So Balboa gets 11 yards but throws a two-yard pass backwards. Not sure what the chain gang's doing over there. <laughs> got it all tangled up. <laughs> well, the announcer said short of the first. Balboa hands off to Pace. Pace makes a juke. You just feel, and it may just be me, you just feel that Ravenwood's about to break a big play. Yeah, and it seems like they're in control, even if the turnover. They're really not did, rattled. Yeah, they're not rattled they're not at rattled. all. And that's a, that's a sign of a, a veteran football team. Hand off to Pace again. 
again, credit to that indie front because them linebackers are just attacking gaps and they're getting hits in the backfield. That was a gain of a fall forward of two yards, but good play by the Eagle yeah. defense there. How about still Katina, the safety coming up for run support right there. Katina and the long line of Katinas. Uh-oh. You're going to have a false start probably here on number nine. You had a defender jump and a tight end jump. They're going to give it a false start to Ravenwood. Again, that's on third and two and a half. So now from third and about two to third and about seven, Balboa takes the snap, looking uh -oh, throw set, back. set up the underneath screen. The problem with that was all of his blockers were downfield. So he was tackled by a whole nest of eagles, if that's what we want to call flock. Oh, here we go. A flock, uh, I don't know, we had the name for it last year. I can't remember. But it was, it was about five of them over there. So they were not fooled on the play. And just like that, a quick three and out for the Raptors. And they are now going to have to punt an independence early on winning the battle of field position. Uh -oh. High end over end punt. Got a chance if he wants to bring it. Bobbles it in the air, and he's tackled immediately yeah, that's star. by the Raptors. So they're going to get the ball at about the 38-yard line after the punt. A little unsure there of his hands on that punt catch as he bobbled it. But it's probably better to secure the possession of the ball there than try to run. Well, I thought I'd give you a score update. Nolensville Centennial battled perennial 5A football teams this week. Centennial 7, Nolensville 0. Dominic Reed doing what Dominic Reed does best. Seven-yard touchdown run. That's right. And, 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 you know, we talked about Franklin giving them all they could handle. Franklin led at the half, 22 to 20. And Nolansville ended up winning 34-22. Yeah. to 22. Centennial had an easier game last week, and they had it, probably got maybe some fresh bodies. Here we go. Oh, McNeely. McNeely all, turns on the juice, makes a cut, has a blocker out front, hits outside, McNeely. gets it to about the 29. McNeely wow. leading the team in rushing tonight. That's probably about a 40-yard run right there. Good-looking run by McNeely, had the wheels. Had blocking out front, but then outran his blocking. I apologize. They marked him out at 31, but he ran down there to about the 11-yard line. <laughs> That's right. Well, maybe he didn't know he was out of bounds yeah. and just kept going. Out of the pistol, you got the motion here. Clandolph is going to be yeah, 11, Clay Davis. Davis. He's kind of the Carter Pace-esque back for Independence. So the Eagles say, hey, what you can do, we can do better. Gets about eight on the play. And the Eagles, David and Goliath here with those lines, they're just attacking that big front for the Raptors, probably not what the Raptors are used to. Well, they need to get positive yards right here so they don't have to shoot themselves in the foot with a third and long. I was wondering if they might take a shot here. Oh, my God. <laughs> Ill-advised pitch. Shoot themselves in the foot. They just fumbled it. They shot and their entire team's feet on that play. Fumble on the play. I believe Raptors are going to have it. No signal yet. No, it's Ravenwood's ball. Ravenwood ball. Yeah. And the crazy thing is, in, in my opinion, is, you know, keep it simple, right? You're down here. You see the pitch. He gets tangled up, and he tries to force it. When well, you wonder, it could that have been an incomplete pass because he laterals it forward. But well. anyway, it's Raptor ball. And, you know, I'm thinking there, it's second and four. Maybe they take a shot here because that's, that's they, then it's third and four, right? That's within the range of their offense, but instead they go with the option. And we called it early. That's about the third pitch that's been off the mark already midway through the second quarter. And we got a false start on 86. Young man's had a tough, tough night already. <laughs> Raptors not usually undisciplined when they play football, but tonight already... You had a face mask. You have a two false starts. Uncharacteristic of this Raptor team, coached by Will Hester. So you got second and 15.
Should be first and 15, actually. First and 15, Balboa rolls out, throws it low. So far, Coach, scouting report on Balboa has the arm strength, but accuracy yeah. all over the place. Is he related to Joe Milton? Uh, well, he's throwing <laughs> the same kind of passes. Joe Milton throws 100 yards to the sideline. And, or 100 miles an hour. Both. I think the receivers have a tough time catching it. Yeah. Maybe have some broken fingers during practice. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Well, and so just like that, it is second and 15. You know, you're still waiting for the big play up by this Raptor offense. And so far, nowhere to be found. Three wide. Balboa hands it off to Pace. Pace made a man miss, does a lot of running, but gets about five. Brings it into at least maybe a manageable third and ten. And that's a great tackle by Ryan Holloway in the open field to catch a pace. Very shifty. You will notice Pace does a lot of dodge back and forth. But they've been able to bottle him up, and he has not been able to get past that second level of this Eagle defense. So big opportunity here for the Eagles, forcing a third and long passing situation here on the 20-yard line. Balboa takes a snap, scans, goes deep. Good coverage there by number 17 of the Eagles, Eli Bauman, on the coverage. The Raptors may have wanted some pass interference there, a little jockeying, but nothing I would have said worthy of a flag. And so fourth and ten for the Raptors. And, Coach, 0-0 zero, zero still. Uh, listen, we may go 15 rounds tonight. Overtime again. If it's Indy, we're going overtime. <laughs> a little bit of confusion there on the punt formation for the Raptors. I think we're going to get a timeout. We're going to get a timeout yeah. because if the up back is telling the person where to go, there's probably some <laughs> confusion there, and you do not want to have a blocked punt here for sure. So fourth and nine, and here we are. Paul Brees, Doug Capella, the WCTV Game of the Week. If you love defense, turnovers, and penalties, you have tuned in to the right game as Ravenwood and Indy are locked at zero, zero. Well, sounds like another hard-hitting game. Seven-nothing Centennial at the end of the first quarter. Uh, Summit was leading 6-0 at the end of the first quarter. So, you know, these are the games, right, Doug, that you spend a little extra time on during the week preparing. So no, seeing low scores right now does not surprise me at all. That's because these are familiar opponents. Good punt. Two catches it and is tagged out of bounds. So Lucas Houston on the return, Longley on the hit out of bounds. So the Eagles are going to take over at about the 40. You know, we're talking about field position, though. If you're saying who's the winner right now with field position, it's got to be Independence. I mean, they, they have had some really good starting points on their drives. Well, and you just got to feel like, I mean, they've had the ball around the 40 on every drive they've had, and they have not been able to capitalize. Except off the interception when they were backed up. That's right. But, but other then they that, got right off the bat a 15-yard right. penalty, moved them out to the 20. McNeely, motion. Big hole open there for number 11. That's their bread and butter, Clay Davis, yep. Jr. And so we're probably going to see a lot of Davis, a lot of pace tonight on each offense of about six on the play. i mean it looks it looks like they're doppelgangers of each other well clearly right now neither are doing what they really want to do they're doing what they have to do that's right a lot of the things they're trying are not working mcneely got two wide motion again another. oh man mcneely oh, still going mcneely first down so McNeely to the fake there to Davis. The defense swallows Davis. But McNeely says, hey, I can run this thing too. So the Eagles, I'm curious to see where the yardage is at this point in the game. you got to think the Eagles have outgained Ravenwood probably by a two-to-one margin. 
drove the ball down a couple times, just nothing to show. It's going to be a keep and pitch. McNeely to the speedster, number five. That's going to be Braden Needham, senior. <laughs> Coach, that pitch and option play looked pretty darn good well, right there. They, they caught him with the counter of motion right there to where the uh, fullback went in and everybody collapsed on the uh, first fake, which gave Neely and Needham in kind of an open area to pitch and were not really pressured right there. So, You know, it's interesting. Years ago when I was on the sidelines as a football coach, we played the powerhouse Red Boiling Springs. <laughs> and they had come out, and every play was in an entirely different offensive set from the wishbone to the spread. And they did nothing well. And so here the Eagles have opened up into pistol, the spread. You know, they've done read out. They've done a lot of different things. But it's actually, aside from the missed pitches, doing pretty well. So there's McNeely. On the keeper. Oh, Up top. Man. Had one man to beat. Gets it down to about the seven. So you know, far, the hometown crowd and the Eagles. You know, you're talking about how Ravenwood has the big guys up front. Independence O-line starting to get a little momentum right here. Well, and if you're going to the scorecard in a 12-round match, you got to score the first two rounds to the Eagles so far. So two wide up top. You got to think this is going to be a run, and it is. McNeely keeps it, hit by two defenders, gets about three or four to the five-yard line. So you're going to have second and goal from waiting for the spot of the ball for up. Uh, second and goal from the three. Well, can the Eagles, this would be a huge stop for the Raptors here. You got to remember, the Eagles already missed one field goal tonight. Uh-oh. The so counter. there's the inside trap play yeah. that we talked about. The Raptors were ready, though, and held for no gain. Drake Garvin, 15. If, I, if I'm reading the number right. I mean, they just gouged Centennial on that play a couple weeks ago. So it's but time to, for bully ball right here between the tackles. That's right. You got third and goal from about the three. So when you look at the splits on that Eagles line, you couldn't slip a nickel between those ankles. And so they're just hip to hip. And that generally means it's pound town. They're just going to try to bash the ball down your throat. So you have a timeout here. 422 left in the second quarter. 0-0 zero, zero in your WCTV game of the week. Well, we could here in the break talk about the Vols and Gators, but probably not a good idea. Yeah, I feel like they have a better chance tomorrow, Coach. <laughs> with the visiting University of Texas San Antonio well, coming to town. UTSA, you, you, you <laughs> got to be careful. Hey, you never know. Also during halftime, our cheerleaders so here we go. Stands, Is this four down, four down territory? Yeah, I think so. Second or yeah. goal from the so I mentioned earlier the splits between the linemen. That's how far my ankle is from your ankle. And, <laughs> Coach, they are lined up. Airtight in there, and the handoff pitch, oh! number five. He's in the end zone. That's going to be Needham on the touchdown. No need to go into two-down territory. The question's answered there, Coach. Indy strikes first, 6 nothing. Ravenwood stunned. Defense hands on the hip, pointing fingers. Whose fault was that? Independence offense just doing what they do. They, they don't change at all. No a lot of misdirection, a lot of things going on. If you don't stay disciplined and stay home, as they say, you're going to get beat, and that is exactly what happened there. Those tackles crashed the A-gap right outside the center. McNeely said, thank you very much. Pitches it to Needham on the outside, and there is your score. Coach, 7-0, here we go. 
Yeah, with 4.17 before halftime, 7 nothing. Eagle straight first on a two-yard gain. I it is a am I shocked by this start by Independence? I'm a little more shocked at the way that Ravenwood has not been able to really move the ball effectively. Uh, you know, maybe that's because we have seen Independence a few times, and this is our first opportunity to see the Raptors. Coach, we're about a biscuit from this uh, booth collapse, and I think <laughs> this is capacity crowd up here tonight. Well, no drinks for you at halftime. No, nope, nope, not at all. Well, and here we go. After two quarters, just about, we have another kickoff. So if you told the Indy coaching staff, hey, midway through the second, you're going to be up by a touchdown, I think they would have taken that 10 out of 10 times. Uh -oh. There's a pooch kick. 13 fields it for the Raptors. Tries to make something out of it. They're going to get the ball at the 40. You know, again, we talked about this in our previous broadcast about the double kicker situation on the kickoff, trying to outsmart and outdo the kick return. You know, I'm not sure that you just line up and kick it in the end zone. Uh, you know, instead of having the ball at the 41, you'd have it at the 20. So, Coach Scott Stidham right there. But he's not your uh, typical <laughs> offense. Well, so, I think, hey, let's shake it up on special teams, too. I think we've seen 37 different plays tonight. They've gone far into the playbook against this Raptor defense. We'll see if Balboa – can respond back, takes the snap, outside blitz pressure, oh. and he needs to thank that official for that false start because 33 was about to tattoo him, as we would say, in the back. The, third, false start of the, first half. Keep it the Raptors just unsettled so far here at the visiting Eagles Nest. Third false start on the offense. This is where your seniors just have to say in the huddle, look, Calm down, we got this, if they huddled. So now first and 15 for Balboa. Out of the shotgun. Middle screen. Middle screen set up a little bit better there. And that's Carter Pace, and Carter that's Pace. a great open field tackle by Holloway, number two. That's right, because Carter Pace is stout. Hard to bring down with an arm tackle, but he got him down after a gain of about you know, he's look if you watch him run toward the sideline, he's a little gimpy right there off that tackle. So 37 yeah, checks check. in. Who is That's that? It's going to be Davis Downland, senior, sophomore running back, rather. So second and six, gain of nine on the previous play. Balboa looking, scanning the field, deep over the middle. Oh. Behind and to the back of number eight. You know, what I recognize from Balboa right now, it looks like a lot of short arm passes where he's just not following through. It's kind of unsure, you know, doesn't like to throw it in traffic. I, you can tell that he's kind of uncomfortable trying to thread the needle per se. So Balboa, you may want to try to get him some uh, easy completions, right? And that Carter Pace middle screen was a good, good start. So let's see if they can keep that up. Well, you got four wide, single back set for the Raptor offense. Balboa takes a snap, looking down the middle again, this yep. time on a dime to number eight, only where the receiver could get it. Well, I, he must have heard me. He was like, hey, let's let this one loose. He said, this is for you, Coach Brees. Watch this. Connects this. Almost looked like the identical play. This time eight again was open. He was more open that time than he was the last time. Yep. So we're we're at about the three minute mark here until halftime, as the Raptors are desperately trying to get some points here before halftime. Here we go, four wide, single back set. No runs on this drive yet. Pace. Uh oh. Fumble on the play. Eagles are going to oh recover. My. Uncharacteristic. Will Balboa drops it on the turf. Now here's the coach's right answer, right? On a turnover, do you go big time shot deep? Reese Pickering, the outside linebacker, 33 for the Eagles, he, he's all been, over the field tonight. And we mentioned his name earlier. 
Yeah, he's, he's created a lot of havoc off the edge. I mean, if you see the football, 33 is not far behind it. <laughs> so the Eagles, again, on their average starting, yeah, starting field yeah, position exactly at about right. the 45-yard line, take a deep shot here, Coach. Oh, here it comes. Here it is. He's wide open. Trickeration down the middle. Oh, that is going to be a pass interference yes. play right there. You can't throw your hands <laughs> on that one. He tackled him before the ball got there. That was going to be a big play. You know, he said he was wide open, but I saw the safety drifting. He, I'm yeah. like, well, here we go. This yeah, might it's be gonna covered. It's going to be close, yeah. Well, it took forever for uh, number 11. To, uh, was that Clay Davis that tried to throw that? But that's the that's the motto of, of coaching handbook 101. Off a turnover, take a deep shot. Got to right? take something. You got to do something. And it was a good looking play. Credit to the safety for staying home on that because if he's not there, that's a touchdown. Yeah, and you know what? 15 yards. That's okay. It's not a seven. It's not uh, seven points. That's so there right. You go. McNeely has the motion, keeps it on the option oh, pitch. Oh, that see. Number five there again, who scored the touchdown. That's going to be Braden Needham. Needham. They're going to need him for the rest of the game. <laughs> they see the action with Clay Davis rolling in motion and then taking that fake up the middle between the tackles, drawing all that attention, giving McNeely and Needham the time for the pitch is just well, and they're but picking their poison tonight because they really have this Raptor defense guessing where is the ball going. On their heels. Yes, on their heels, having no idea where it's at. And that's the whole design behind this offense is where are we going? I mean, he's in five wide right now. <laughs> Motion man. And there it is, the handoff to 30. He's going to try to get the perimeter. Oh. I didn't think he was going to get it on that one. Well, good for Alexander just to hang on to the ball because he really got run down pretty well. Well, and, you know, they just simply strung that too wide because the perimeter was sealed off all yeah. the way at the end. You had the inside cornerback. They just weren't going to be able to get it. And so, just like that, it's second and ten, which is contrary to what I just said. They keep him guessed. But they have. They've kept their Raptors yeah. defense on their heels. I mean, who knows what they're going to do with the ball right here. Back in the pistol. There's the motion. Hand off to third. He swung that probably too wide yeah. and is caught midair and tackled. That's going to be a loss of two. I think the Raptors have had just about enough. I think you may be right. You know, you talked about how deep in the playbook you go. Well, we're in week six, and we're in a big-time game. You, you've you turned to page 40 now in the playbook and, and, and said, hey, we're, we're going to try some things that they haven't seen on tape. Well, and just you know, just from the the few weeks ago against Centennial, where it seems like they ran maybe five plays, yep. flip it, you have ten, and here you got. I mean, they've really opened it up, as you said, and gone deep and put a lot of stuff out here that probably was not seen on film by the Raptor defense. McNeely back to throw has time. Zero is not going to get there. Pass to the sideline yeah. is going to be no good. You Big, know that interesting, Doug. I mean, the clock's still running. You had third and 12. Now you're in fourth and 12 with 37 seconds. You know, I'm not sure. I, he, Coach Stidham had two timeouts remaining. I'll go for it here. I'll just take a chuck in the end zone. You're not hurting anything. You got 37.8 seconds left on the clock. The Raptors have not been able to prove they have done much. Now, I don't want to go in here 7-7 seven to seven on some big play, but I don't know if well, I punt here. Here's the deal. We just had a... Luke McNeely just exited and Drake Garvin. Well, you probably have the bigger arm of the two, maybe. Hey, so, he, he's got to have time. He's got to have time. There he goes. He's looking. Rolls out. Oh, you got to run deep. Time. Run to the end zone, man. I'm really go. not sure what the design was right there. <laughs> I don't know. I'm sitting here saying run to the end zone, but. You throw it, long, they had one guy deep. Yeah, you had a lot of crossing patterns right there. And That's you, where, to me, you load one side and you just send them all down on go routes and throw it up. All right, so Coach Chester, 30 seconds left. He's like, well, thank you very much. I'll take that 30 seconds. Let's see what we can do. Well, and the Raptors have just not been able to get out of their own way. They've had fumble. They've had an interception. They've had penalties. Just not going their way in this first half. And the good news is those are all things you can clean up at halftime. I'm sure Coach Hester is going to give them a gentle – talking to there in the locker room. But those penalties and turnovers are things you can clean up. 
see what we got here. Potentially a timeout. Not sure. Well, the uh, back judge, I don't know what he's looking at. <laughs> looking at the play clock. I don't. Am I missing the play clock? I don't well. see one. I, don't, I do not see a 30 second. So here we go. Much to do about nothing. Balboa, quick pass to the inside slot receiver. Made a couple guys miss, got a first down. That pass is going to be to number eight, Ben Hubbard, who's been, yeah. uh, aside from pace, that has been the go-to on offense. So it took six seconds, Doug. T Raptors back on the ball. Low snap, Balboa looking deep. A lot of air under the ball. On sails to the sideline, not even close. Second and ten, a hair over ten seconds left in your first half. Eagles holding on seven nothing over the visiting Ravenwood Raptors. Not we don't have stats up here. Not sure of Balboa's completion percentage, but I'm going to assume it's sub fifty. Balboa rolls it out, hands it to Pace. Counter, counter inside. He's going to get about nine. Four and a half seconds left. I think Hester was just trying to get it and. Chuck it, range. Yeah, now here's what we do know is Balboa does have the arm strength, I think, to get it down the field. The question is, will someone like Pickering, who's come off the edge. Right, I mean, you got your kid's got to run 50 yards downfield at least. And you got to give him enough time to get 50 yards so downfield. So you're, you're talking, he's probably going to have to have four to five seconds of protection before Well, you got to think of it, it this way, right? 40-yard dash is a, a 4-5 NFL, pretty good. That's High right. school, 4-9. You yeah. got to go 10 more yards, maybe 5-2, five, 5-3. Two, five, right. you're, you're, you're needing to throw this ball at about four and a half seconds to get it down the field. And so I don't know that what? he is going to be able to. Yeah. Interesting that they, I thought I saw Luke McNeely back there at the last play playing safety. <laughs> they pulled him off and said, uh, we got this one. Well, and it looks like they're. This is the old, we're going to maybe rush three and, and send eight back. You know, Carter Pace, the fastest guy for Ravenwood, I think he's up there up top. So there goes Balboa, scrambles out, throws it short. No yeah, time that's left. Gonna that's going to be the half. And so just like that on the 11-yard out route, Ravenwood 0, Independent 7 on your WCTV Game of the Week. I'm Doug Capella, Paul Brees. We'll be back after the half. All right, here we go, back. Second half action. I'm here with my guy, Paul Brees, Doug Capella. Kickoff's up. Just like that, mid-announcement, the ball goes up. Raptors take it out. 42-yard line, and we're back on the WCTV Game of the Week. Well, Ravenwood down. Maybe to some a bit of a surprise to the host Independence Eagles. Again, the uh, two two person kickoff there, the two kicker look, short kick. Ravenwood, great field position. You know, we talked about it in the first half how Indy had fantastic field position on pretty much every drive except for one where they intercepted the ball down there inside the five. This is the, this is Ravenwood's chance with great field position. And I, th I think they should rely heavily on the run game here. Well, and we'll see what we got. Two wide, 84 in motion, two back set. Balboa takes a snap, flag on the play. Looks probably going to be either illegal procedure or an offsides, just depending. Ravenwood had a man in motion. Not sure if the other guy was set. You can't snap the ball with two folks in motion. But we'll see what we got. Well, they let the play go, so it'll be interesting to see if it's on the defense. They're waving it off. Waved off the flag, which means it may have been on the offense, but offense must have gotten set. And so here we go. Excitement at halftime, Coach. Teacher, seven-day all-expenses-paid trip to a destination of her choice. Good job on the Eagles on that. Uh-oh. Balboa looking, makes something out of nothing, has some room. 
Oh, almost stripped. Almost right gave there. it up yeah. right there. He was holding it like the old loaf of bread saying there on his side. The Eagle defender came up, almost punched it loose. Coach, Balboa looked good there running the football. Well, he, he made something out of nothing. Eli Bauman right there on the tackle. And a third, crucial third and one. Third and short here for the Raptors. Handoff to Pace. Pace has not been in the game. That's going to be 37 who picks up the first. That's Davis Dowland. So where is Carter Pace? Well, he, he, you know, he got tackled early in the first quarter on a plate. Kind of got drugged down and went off limping. So we'll see if maybe there's some lingering effects of that. But Dallin on the handoff yeah. again. Oh, my. Just a sophomore. Coach, hey, Hester said, hey, you got to fill the shoes of Pace <laughs> right now. And the sophomore came in doing what he can but gets nothing there on first down. Second down here. Hunter, Hunter Burton on the tackle. Got a full second and ten here for Balbo out of the shotgun. Takes the snap, quick looks to his right. Ball's tipped oh, and wow. caught. But 13 there on the catch, but runs backwards to go forwards. Yeah. Oh. Max Kimple on the catch. All right, that's pretty good concentration on the tip because it was fluttering. Nice play by Holloway on the open field tackle right there to limit it to one yard. So third and long here, third and about seven. Call it a long seven, short eight. Four wide. Raptors going to have a single back set. Balboa takes the snap, rolls left, scanning, sets his feet and throws oh. way short of his receiver. And that is going to be in turnover time. Eagles are going to take over on the pick. It's about the equivalent to a short punt there. Yeah. But, Coach, that's, that's just underthrown, poor yeah. mechanics, just a bad throw. That's the old right-handed quarterback rolling to the left, having to throw back. It just looked like he just kind of flinged it up there, well, had no he, chance. He stopped and set his feet to throw, but one, he threw it into double coverage, and two, he threw it about four yards short, and it – Floating, just easy pick for Indy. Again, third turnover now for this Eagles defense, winning the turnover ratio. Let's see now if they can capitalize. Coming out, man in motion for McNeely. McNeely hands it up middle. It's going to be a gain of about three. It's got to be Clay Davis. Anybody up the middle? It's going to be number 11, the workhorse. Right down by Hampton. Gain of four on the play. Second and six from the 29. So you got to wonder if Pace is out for the game, what that does to the Raptor offense, a big part of their offense there. <laughs> it definitely changes it up. you got to sim simplify it probably a little bit. Pace, the senior, has uh, been through the wars. Oh. Option play out here to Needham. Needham scored the lone touchdown for the Eagles. Going to be about a yard short. and. So you mentioned the, the similarities before Clay Davis and Carter Pace, and that's where, Mom, I want Carter Pace. And you're like, no, we have Clay Davis at home. They're almost identical of one another. Short, stocky running backs that run hard and are running between the tackles. Three wide. There's the handoff again. Up the middle, breaks uh -oh, the tackle. Davis. And there goes Davis. Gets to the third level there with the safety, makes the tackle. Clay Davis rips off a huge chunk play right up the middle. Just got done comparing him to Carter Pace. And uh, he rips off a huge chunk there up the middle. Carter Davis said, say my name. That's right. <laughs> Clay Davis, bingo. He said, keep your name, keep my name in your mouth. And we're going to talk about him probably a little yeah, bit more. Yeah, probably a little drive. more. There we go with the motion to need him again. Wow, that's a good great play game. there by 95. Yeah, that's fantastic. On the Raptor defense, that's going to be Sam Rohan. Don't mess with the Rohan there on that tackle. <laughs> I did get your reference right there. I don't know if everybody else will. <laughs> but you got to go deep into the Adams. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> 
He, uh, you know, that's, again, the jet sweep right home, strikeout home run type situation. That's right. You're either going to get hit for a two-yard loss or a 30-yard gain usually on that. Not super successful attacking the perimeter tonight of the Raptors. They, oh. They've hit a few times, but they've been hit for a loss more often than not. And the subject of a couple poor pitches by McNeely. Oh, man. Busted McNeely play. on kind of a weird-looking uh -oh. play there. Oh, <laughs> oh nice. <laughs> Stays on his feet, goes for a quick somersault there, and loses a, back yeah. <laughs> a Austin, shoestring tackle there on the Austin play. Austin Mayfield. Loss of about four on the play. Third and long. With the shoestring tackle. Second and third and 15, excuse me, for the Eagles. So what started out with a good-looking drive, now has them backed up to third and 15 on the uh, Raptor 45. So see what they're going to do here. So Clay Davis, huge chunk gain negated by these two uh, loss of play or loss of yards plays back to back. And so we'll see wait, if they attack the center of the field here. They've done it a couple times. McNeely back, scanning the field. Looking deep, no. it's going to be way overthrown. Good coverage there. That was one of those plays McNeely, McNeely's like, I'm a little uncomfortable with this. I got plenty of time. Uh, you know, and I, it's kind of like a five-step drop, and he's sitting there in the pocket. He's like, Ugh. That's right. I'm usually the guy that's kind of moving out of the pocket, making things happen with my feet. So plenty of arm strength, but about 11 yards overthrown, and the coverage was really good on the safety there. So the Raptors have two deep here to field this punt they're probably looking to make something happen you better hope this punts to the right because and it is because they had no protection on the left oh. side oh. And that is going to go into the end zone just barely and so the eagles will take over on the 20 yard line so or, correction the raptors will take over on the 20 yard line so 33, Reese Pickering leading this Eagle defense tonight out on the field all over the ball. Let's see if he has anything in store on this drive. Still no Carter Pace sightings on the field. So they're probably going to start leaning a little bit more on Ben Hubbard, who split out to the right. Uh-oh, a little confusion. Confusion there. Will Coach Hester have to burn a timeout right here? Hubbard in motion, and just like oh. that, the pitch to Hubbard has some room outside, makes a few defenders miss, still on his feet, and he's going to run out of bounds. And so they ran the motion there and tossed it to Hubbard. This gain could be anywhere from five to nine yards, depending on where he went out of bounds. So they're going to give him about four and a half, five yards on the play. And so we'll see. There was a lot of confusion before snap on that play where folks were going to set up, but Balboa got him settled. So there's the handoff to the sophomore running back, jumps forward for about two. It's going to be Davis Dallin. So third in a short yardage situation. If you're Hester, you can't exactly feel comfortable about running it right up the middle here. There's a handoff again to Dallin. Runs hard, and he's going to have the first. Forward progress. He gets ridden down hard, but forward progress will give them the first down. Dallin remains in the backfield. Raptors here in the what I would call NASCAR right on the ball, a la Josh Heupel. Hubbard in motion. Pitch goes to Hubbard again. Saw this play earlier. Uh -oh. Switches field. He's got a shot. This is going to be a dangerous play. Hubbard down 50 to the 40. Stiff arm <coughs> out of bounds at about the 33-yard line. Not how that play was intended to go. <laughs> That's a Hubbard just changed his field and put his quarterback, Balboa, in a precarious spot to throw a lead block as he switches fields but gets nearly 40 yards on the play. Probably their biggest gain of the night yep. on a busted play. Balboa hands it to Dallin oh. and met immediately. 
Dallin did not run to daylight on that play. No. He ran right into the teeth of that Eagle defense. Hunter Barton, zero. Says, not today. Two wide up top for the Raptors. Balbo out of the shotgun. Hands it to Dallin again. Oh, backside tackle. That's going to be 22. double twos on the Eagles defense. It's going to be Justice Duarte on the tackle. Just follow, followed that pulling guard right there. So a huge third and eight. Best field position for the night aside from the interception when they got it down to the five for this Raptors offense. And it's they're staring at third and we'll call it eight. From the 30-yard line, Balboa takes a snap, scanning, throws it over the middle to oh! Hubbard. Good pass, actually, Absolutely. there by Balboa. Just hit and dropped, and the offense is not moving. Hester keeps the offense out. Would not shock me to see that play run again. So Garrett Peebler right there on the breakup. Well-thrown ball, but yeah. well-timed hit by the defender. Just knocks the ball out of Hubbard's chest. And here we go. Biggest play of the night for this Raptor offense. Fourth and we'll call it seven. Rolling, Rolling out to yeah. his left again. And he's open. Hubbard, their best, best offensive option there on that play. Wide open on the sideline. Simple. Pass and catch. Hubbard delivers the ball. And Raptors convert on fourth and eight. Yeah. Keep it turned up for your defense. Raptors not slowing down here. On the ball, waiting for the call on the sideline from Coach Hester. Balboa is in the shotgun. Dallin single back. Balboa takes a snap. Hands it to Dallin. A little bit more room in the middle than last time. Gets about four on the play. Best drive of the night for the Raptors here, I think. Huge play courtesy of Ben Hubbard when yeah. he switched field and ran back. Hubbard in the shotgun. Holds uh -oh. off. Hands it. Hey, There's there he Carter is. Pace. Carter Pace says, right, Coach, I'm ready. I've seen enough. Pace checks in. That's a great sign for that Raptor offense. Comes in and comes right back out. Yeah. So you got to think he's not 100%. <laughs> Coach Esther says, man, I need a first down. What do I do? Carter Pace. Well, this is a Raptor territory where they need no mistakes. So first and goal, they cannot get a first down. Balboa oh. takes it off. He's going to be in the end zone. That's got to be a touchdown. Nope. nope. Short. Official calls him down. Look good from up here. But the official right there calls him down on about the one-inch line. Guess who just ran on the field for the Raptors? I would imagine that's going to be Carter Pace on the field. Short yarded situation here. That adrenaline will get you in the end zone. And oh! He falls down. Loses a yard on the play. Coach, I don't know if you do that. If you're not 100% and he look, he just came in and fell there. Still Katina. We've said his name off uh, defensively as well. With a huge play. Third, and now they lost a couple. Looks like about on the two and a half. I mean, and you got first and goal from the one, and now you're third and goal from the three. Third and goal from the three is a lot different. Yeah, Coach Hester says, let's talk about Let, this. Let's look at this one a little bit. Well, speaking up this field right here, uh, Doug, on Tuesday, two Williamson County middle schools will battle it out for the single-A football championship. Thompson Station, the Thunder, against the Legacy Lions. Two of the more relatively newer schools in the county. They're going to get to play on this field. And Thompson Station quickly established itself as a strong athletic program over there. And then in the AA division, the perennial power Brentwood Vikings will be taking on Mill Creek Mavericks. Old Mill Creek. And Mill Creek defeated the 
Vikings in the regular season. So we'll see if the Vikings get a little revenge in the championship game of the double A. So you got to think this is four down territory for the Raptors here. Third and short. Oh, Balboa's yeah, going to scramble got it. out. He, oh, he out fumbled. fumbles out of bounds. Wow. Coach, he's got to thank somebody that that ball squirted immediately left and not forward and out of bounds or you had a touchback. That's exactly right. Fourth down. Fourth. And what? He, I believe he had the edge right here. He, told, he had a man blocking. Well, the old turf monster gets oh, him he here as he him. slips. And the ball fumbles out of bounds. And so two plays in a row. There must be a puddle down there because the ball carriers, two consecutive plays, slip and fall. And here's the play of the game for the Raptors. Fourth and goal. Pace in the backfield. Pace gets the handoff, yep. and he's going to go in. He just wills his way into the end zone there. Touchdown Raptors. And so all the drama you could have out of a goal line drive there. And finally on fourth and short, he punches it in and brings us to a 6-7 to seven ball game. And dare I say, we may be headed to overtime, to overtime this with is unbelievable. the Independence Eagles. I, you know, if, if this was a – well, we'll, we'll wait for the uh, – Pending extra point, right? Kick is up, and oh. it's good. So there you have it, Coach, 7-7. Seven, seven. And that took just about everything the Ravenwood Raptors could have on offense from busted plays where they get 30 yeah. to Carter Pace, who we're assuming is not 100%, runs it in. You have a fumble out of bounds. They had all of the breaks – go in their direction on that play or on that drive rather and just like that tie ball game deep into the third quarter two minutes and six seconds left so if you're a young guy on this Eagles roster a sophomore or a freshman and you play you've played a lot of football as a youngster for this program Well, we'll see what happens. These, it's taken two and three quarters of a quarter for each team to score one touchdown. Ravenwood does not go with the two kicker look here. Imagine they're just going to kick this deep, and they do. Squibbler, that might go out right of man. bounds. Yeah, not a good oh, play there no. for Ravenwood. That's going to bring the ball up to I believe the forty-yard line. Uh, 30, 35. Five. It's been a while since we've seen a Williamson County kicker kick it out of bounds. Well, I, you know, they, you either get it at the 35 or the spot where it goes out, I believe. If it's well, at, past yeah. the 35, I can't yeah. remember. 35, there we but go. Yeah, there we go. They it's spotted official. it at the 35, which all in all is probably <laughs> most teams would take that as far as a defensive viewpoint, the ball on the 35. You see all kinds of things on high school special teams. So the Eagle offense has yet to take the field. Ravenwood's defense, like their offense, is already on the ball. I don't see a play clock anywhere. Yeah, uh, that's what I've been looking for all game, and I cannot find it. Well, and we were here one night, and I, I don't – they were getting called for – Yep. Delay of game constantly, and so I guess something's changed here. In any regard, three wide for the Eagles. Single back set. Need him in motion. Back in motion the other way. There's your old counter play. And the oh. Raptors not going for it. Minimal gain of maybe one and a half on the play. Ball on the carry. So you're looking at it second and eight. Neither team panicking right here. I mean, I, both are used to this type of football game. Yeah, and I think it actually probably favors independence right now. That's right. You, no, no reason to get away from what you've done all game. Not, no desperation mode. There's the pitch out to Needham. Good blocking on the perimeter. It's going to be close to a first. He's going to be about two yards short. So we're going to have a third down here. Big play for both sides there. The Raptors really wanting to stop. And the Eagles really probably trying to squeeze this clock as much as they can. 
We have a Raptor down, so we will check the scoreboard. Scores from around the nation. A lot oh. of good inner inner division or inner county games going on tonight. Well, Summit still leads Franklin six to nothing into the third quarter. So not much changed out there and and that down the road. Down the road, that's right. Trying to find some other scores from around the Ladies and gentlemen, conference. Can we give it up for number one, Jaden Smitherman? He's had an unbelievable game tonight on defense. And he's up in one. Oh, well, Nolensville has cut it 14 to 7. Centennial still leads. So there you go. Nolo on the board, 7 to 14. Indy on offense, third and two. Franklin's score just baffles me. From the 43. Not sure how they're being shut out, but hey. Like you'd mentioned earlier, anytime teams play within the same county, that's always going to be tighter than you, you would think. So here you go. Third down and short for the Eagles. It's going to go right up the middle, and oh, <coughs> Ravenwood says, no, sir, fourth and one. On now we're in a questionable call here. He ran into a... a Big 7-2 in that defensive front. Eagles offense still on the field. You got to wonder if Stidham's just going to try to draw them off sides here. With a hard count. So, see what we got here. No, he snaps it. And that's going to be a first down. Oh, oh, oh. Big 11 for the Eagles, Clay Davis. Yep. Coach, they didn't even try to draw him off sides. No. They went on first sn clap there, snapped it, maybe caught him off guard. Yeah, I mean. Usually if you try to do that, you clap a couple times, get him to. Well, that's going to wrap it up for the third quarter. I mean, what a way to end it. We're tied up at seven here, heading to the fourth quarter. Hey, if you're watching us on WCTV on the live YouTube stream, Hey, text your friends, text your family. This one's going to be a dandy. Yeah, here we are going into the fourth quarter, locked at seven. What? Ravenwood and Independence. I do want to tell you this. You may or may not know this already. Nolensville scored against Centennial to make it 14-7. 89-yard touchdown reception, Caleb Farr. Do you know that, gentlemen? Sounds familiar. Okay, 89-yard touchdown, Caleb Farr. Well, I'm going to guess that Dad Shane Farr, your local State Farm agent, he's going to be pretty <laughs> ecstatic about that one. Are you re are you related to any of them? He may be a brother-in-law. Okay. Hey, now, Doug is now just checking his phone. <laughs> Let's see. What did I miss? So, good for Nolensville to cut it. Huge first down as the Eagles just are barely into the Raptor territory. So here we go, swapping field sides at the 50. He's knee in motion. Here comes the He's going to get the ball. He has a little, well, I didn't really know how to call that, Coach, because he ran out of room then found some room, then ran out of room and found some room. Gain of seven for Needham on the play. Second and three from the 43. Here we go, second and about three. Oh, and I tell you what, oh my gosh. Oh, McNeely, McNeely. catches his own pass. McNeely has it added back to him, and he runs all the way to the 11 yard line, a la Marcus Mariota in the yes. playoff. And McNeely to McNeely, and a 30. He's like, hey, Hubbard, if you're going to have a busted play and turn the field, watch this. Yeah. Oh, and there we go. The announcer stole my thunder oh, with the man, Mariota. Oh, you're way call. ahead of him. Come on, you're way guys. Ahead of him, Doug. Come on. Listen to WCTV. Come we'll on, tell you this. Yeah, we're breaking news over here. All right, here we go. 
Two wide, lots of excitement, a little electricity, if we may, in the crowd tonight as the Eagles driving down the field. Clay Davis. <laughs> that time he ran into my my friend, the, Zero. Yeah. That's uh, Jacob Thompson. Yeah, he has his own zip code down there. He's a big fella, but low in number, Zero. So here we go, second and about. We'll call it eight. eight. In field goal range here, Coach. Yep. Now you got to remember, right? Uh, Independence missed, missed, missed one missed already. about a 35, call it a 40-yarder. Little separation. There's the counter. Had one man to beat. Gets tackled at about the 10, gain of about three. Coach, I think if he beats that man on the perimeter, he might be warming up his end zone dance. I love that play call right there. Calvin Wall. Well, when you saw it open, you saw the counter come. I was like, this might be something right here. But now, then he, he just gets grabbed by the last man on the end there. Now, the question is right here, Coach Stidham, you know you're in field goal range. You see it on the right hash right here. And if you have a uh, – you got to figure out what's comfortable for your kicker. You may want to run this play toward the middle of the hashes just to keep – Keep it safe, and now Coach Stidham is going to call timeout to kind of think about it. Right. He heard you again. We're just ahead of the. Uh, we're way ahead of the head game. of the we're action. If you'd want to plug us right yeah. into the headset down there, we'll let you know what to yeah. do. We may actually be plugged in. So, tell you what, it's te it must be teacher night here at uh, Independence High School because, I mean, they've given away a free trip, seven days, all expenses. Uh, this is huge. I don't. I mean, if you're, if you're. Doug or myself, uh, PTO president, listening in, maybe. Uh, hey there, look, do we do a broadcaster a la <laughs> 504 coordinator appreciation? Well, you can never underappreciate a PE teacher, Coach. No, not at all, not at all. Uh, usually, usually you ask adults, they, they, they rarely enjoyed middle school PE back in the day, but uh, hopefully we can. Try to do a good job, keep things entertained, and uh, you know we're not climbing ropes and never uh, a dull moment in Paul Brees' gym with <laughs> Coach on the microphone. Uh, Got to keep them honest. Here we go, big down for the Eagles. Potentially one of the bigger plays of the game. You got third and about four, heading in on the nine yard line. Motion to Needham. There's the handoff. Oh, gonna go with Needham. He's got the first. Yes. Probably not a bad thing for Independents not to punch it in. Right, they can run a few more plays here and drain that clock. Listen, I'm not a gambling man, wink, but I think we all know. <laughs> I think Clay Davis may be the guy that's going to be the recipient of these next one play, two plays, three plays, whether they get a that's stop right. or not. 11 is going to be your guy. They, this is where you don't even call in a play. You just say, give it to Clay. Yeah. <laughs> No, it's going to oh, be McNeely, no. and he is, oh, throws a stiff Whoa. arm, throws another oh. arm, and the turf monster strikes again. Goodness gracious, Coach, the turf monster. It's his second time he's shown up, though, right? Uh, Balboa earlier had trouble. That's right. On the prior drive, he had uh, two slips and falls. Carter Pace was the first to fall victim. Then Balboa, the play later, falls victim. And now McNeely stretches it wide. Two beautiful stiff arms, and then the turf monster gets him. But like you said, probably not a bad thing. Ooh. There's Clay Davis hit hard. And that's probably should have been the first play. Now you're in a third down and inside of the one. Well, and we just hit the eight-minute mark here in the fourth yeah, quarter. Yeah. So, I mean, you're not going to run this down under a minute on this drive, so they're going to have to really think about what they want to do here. I think you got to go north and south. I don't think you got to get – You know, honestly, if I'm the Eagles and I don't score on this play, I'm probably going to kick a field goal based off of how my defense has played oh, for the man. first three-plus quarters. Yeah. And there it is. I don't think – Oh, he's way in. Yeah. There it is. Touchdown. They drag him back out of the end zone, but he was already a yard in. Officials made that a little more dramatic than it needed to be. He was standing in the end zone, and the call still hadn't come in. But there you have it. 
Is that a nail in the coffin for this Raptor team who all of a sudden finds themselves down six in the fourth quarter? Oh, yes. The kick is up and good. That extends our lead. The home host Eagles 14, the stunned Raptors sideline seven. And coach, I don't know when's the last time the Raptors have been held to seven points. They put 14 on Merrillville, or Alcoa, excuse me. And so right now the Eagles are saying, well, our defense is probably a little bit better than Alcoa. <laughs> Taking it easy on the uh, cheer squad down there doing push-ups only up to 14 so far tonight i think i could go down there and join them for that i still think the uh, centennial student section are the are the cheer cheer squad leaders i don't know if you have done a centennial home game but they have a bench press that they they put down there and they do a, a bench press for every point scored and it definitely got harder with the game of the week we had when they scored about 35. <laughs> Well, even 35 push-ups, I might have to tag out of that one. All right, so here we go. The two-kicker formation. And there's the pooch kick. Now that one's going to hit the ground. Number two for the Raptors, looking for some space. Dangerous with the football, swings it over his head. Well, you got to realize something, Doug. Coach Stidham must have a lot of trust in his kickoff team to really have – because your two kickers are going to be the last ones down the field. Now you, Well, you're sacrificing a man on coverage. Yeah. But with them kicking it short every time, you know, I, I think that they can expect the kickers to stay in that location and stay home and prevent any, anything from going deep. But I've never seen anything like it with the two-kicker formation. Well, so here we go. Again, plenty of time on the clock. Ravenwood doesn't have to do anything outrageous. Sends Hubbard in motion. Balboa keeps it. Shifty on his feet, gets about three. I'm surprised it took Hester this long to turn him loose. He's definitely got some speed. But as we've seen before, the, the turf monster has yeah. gotten him a couple times. And what we realize now is that Carter Pace is not going to come in until he's really needed. So if they get it down to about the uh, two-yard line down there. Yeah, or, or a fourth down in certain situations. Right, so... The back remains Davis Dallin. Hubbard goes in motion. Balbo out of the shotgun. Quick pass to Hubbard. Hubbard's going to go out, see where he spots him. Yep. So it's going to be third and about three. Nothing guaranteed here. Both Not teams have struggled in short yardage situations. So third and a long three for the Raptors. I think they're at a, a spot on the field where they're probably not going to punt it. I mean, the clock at six minutes and 40 seconds, we're, we're almost to the end. And we're not in panic mode yet, but we're in like, hey. Well, I'm guessing they'll see what they get here if they get the first good. So Dallin yep. is going to pick great. it up with the assist oh! of a couple down linemen pushing and gets about 13 on the play. Probably Dallin's longest run of the night. He gets about three and runs into the teeth of that defense. It's a good, strong run. Some confusion on the offense here. Receivers telling each other where to go. Coach Hester's going to use a timeout. He's, which well, is now he's down to one left. I don't know if there's going to be a lot of strategy discussed in this timeout because all four receivers pointing to each other on where to go. Meanwhile, none of them look like they were in the right place. So 6-17, Raptors a little bit of a sense of urgency here, but again, not having to get away from their game plan. Well, let's, on the let's talk about this, Doug. For Centennial holding on to that 14-7 lead over Nolensville, he heading into the fourth quarter. And I just picked it up down here. Summit 13, Franklin Admirals zero, which is a shocker because the Admirals have the capability of putting points on the board. That's right. You just got to wonder if the maybe somebody got hurt yeah, or something out there at Franklin. You're exactly right. 
So here you go. Hubbard in motion again. The focal point now. Dallin oh, with the handoff. Wow. Big room there. What a hole. He's going to get about eight. And all of a sudden, I said maybe later in the game, that big line would wear out that Indy defense. And Dallin, all of a sudden, lots of room to run down there. That offensive line feeling good. Just under six minutes to play, and Ravenwood driving in command of this offense is Balboa. Hubbard in motion again. Looks uh -oh. like a busted play there, yep. and Balboa is going to be taken down for a loss. Went to fake it off to Dallin. Dallin ran, and that something something didn't happen as it should have on that something play. Something definitely did not happen. <laughs> and that's a sign of a young quarterback, right? He's only a sophomore. Reed, Reed Maxson, the junior linebacker right there on the stop. Well, to his credit, you know, sometimes that can go from bad to worst. And right there, he uh, he just ate it and took the sack. So third and about five. You got three wide, single back set. Balboa sends Hubbard in motion. Fakes the handoff, throws it out to Hubbard. Oh. He's going to be close, flag on the play. And, and, and here's what I'm thinking. And it ends up with a receiver downfield. One of those offensive linemen was way out in front. We'll see right here. An eligible receiver downfield, yep. Well, you can only get a yard deep on those plays. And so on that, it happened so quick, uh, it's actually kind of surprising. They sent Hubbard in motion, faked the handoff, and threw it right to him. But in that time, one of the, one of the heavies got downfield. Yeah, they've been dragging the, the, this last series. They've been really making a good push down the field. So that is a huge penalty. You're, I think you're still in four-down territory maybe. Because well, that's right. right. Ravenwood right has already burned two timeouts, so they're only stuck with one left. Two timeouts because they were confused. And so wasted timeouts, maybe costing them here in the game. So Balboa scanning the field, looking for it all. Has Hubbard. Him. Oh, my goodness. Connects on the dot to Hubbard on the five-yard line. What a pass, Coach. And the key to that whole thing was the five guys up front. Balboa, plenty of time, not pressured at all, set his feet, slung it down there. And that's what a quarterback needs to build that confidence up. And look who is in the game. Make two oh, sixes. yeah. The goal, all of a sudden, the goal line back. But Hubbard, huge part of the offense, and steps up as Pace has been sidelined. But Pace checks back in. Balboa from the five. Hands it to Pace, and he's in the end zone just like that. Wow. Ravenwood makes it easy work of that drive right down the field. Now you got to wonder if Pace has two good, <laughs> two good wheels, how – what has he got going on? I mean, that guy's on. Well, he's run better as of late than he did earlier in the yeah. game. And, Coach, I just think that big line is wearing down that defense. I think you're exactly right. I mean, even Dallin running seven, eight yards a chunk on that drive. And here we go, the all-important extra point to even the score. Snaps back, kick is up, oh! it's blocked. It's blocked. The Eagles blocked the extra point. Oh, my. Steal Katina on the block of the extra point. Coach, the Eagles alive, so tired of overtime. Katina just takes it over and blocks the extra point. That is a huge special teams play on the Eagles. And that's not Steal Katina, that's Blaze Katina. Blaze Katina. Number 43. My the sophomore. Correction, Blaze Katina on the block. Well, the, the hands team is coming in. Well, you got about four minutes, so I wonder, do they need to kick it on sides here? Kick it way out there. But Raven, there's a big open gap. Ravenwood only has one timeout, so you got to wonder. Can if, they get a chip shot? Can, I mean, if they chip it right over the second line right here, they could be in business. They just race down there and get it. If I'm number one, I'm not moving number back. One. He, I'm moving up. No, exactly. These kickers are advanced, even in high school. Well, well, he kicks it deep. 
One calls for a fair catch at the five yard. He did call, call for the fair catch. Kind of confusing there. He called for the fair catch, which to me at the five was kind of interesting. Well, there's a, you know, the safety protocol. You can call for a ball. fair catch, and it's spotted at the 25. Now, in high school. But they didn't award it to him. They did not award it and to they're him. they're spotting the ball at the 12-yard line. <laughs> He's like, whoops. I mean, he clearly called for the fair catch. And so, no no such luck, Well, say the, the gentleman in striped shirts. Yeah, I know. Props. Pr- Prom opportunity for independence. The way their offense is built, the way they've run the ball, Clay Davis, 11, McNeely. Well, and, and if I'm if I'm Stidham, I'm staying away from the option right here. Well, McNeely you, put it on the ground a few times early, and so I'm just handing the ball off. And there goes Needham to the perimeter. Does all he can, gets about a yard on the play maybe. I mean, you went with that jet sweep. Now you've lost yardage. And, but we got to – oh, man. Got a player down for right, Indy, slow. but he's getting up. That's Needham. He may need him an ice pack for that leg. No gain on the play. So here we are, second down and about 10. <laughs> Waiting for the call to come in. Just clock management here. They're going to let this run down. Huddling up. This is where you snap it with about three seconds left. Give you a little grace period there on the clock. 3.30 left in the game. There's motion. Handoff. Changes direction on the field. Ravenwood got him this time. He's going to lose big yardage on the play. And Coach Indy has to be careful here. It is now third and about 16 after that play. Guess who has not touched the ball this drive? Clay Davis. That is correct. They went with Needham in motion and then gave it to number 30. There, Braxton Alexander, the sophomore, and he was slung down. And Coach, they're staring at third and 16. A bad place to be. On their own five yard line. Ravenwood, I'm sure, has a kicker that can kick 40 yards. And so you gotta be careful here if you're independence, you got to get some kind of yards, but you cannot turn the ball over here. I'm thinking screen pass, something along those lines. Well, Coach Stidham's calling the timeout. So 237 left. Plenty of time for that Raptor offense to get something going should they get the ball back. And this Eagle offense coach is not really meant to pick up third and 16. So we'll see after the timeout what they decide to do. If I'm coach, I'm probably going to run the ball here. There's, the Raptors have one timeout left. Well, we got a score update 20 seconds ago. The Franklin Admirals finally on the board with 10:51 remaining in the game. 13-7, Summit leads. There you go. And the only other show in town that we've been checking on, Centennial Nolansville. We'll get that update when it comes. But last check, Centennial up 14-7. Well, we got a big play right here, Doug. Well, and it looks like, again, those linemen are tight together. So that, to me, is probably going to be a run. There you go going to be McNeely on the keeper has some blocking on the outside he's going to get it out to about the 10 which is really all they really needed to do get him away from the end zone keep that clock running but they coach Hester realized now it's fourth down he's going to use that last time out oh, yep. and 226 is a lifetime it is it is and so you got fourth and 10 I'm going to go ahead and say they're not going to go for it here you know I think you know if we look back right Kickoff, the fair phantom fair catch that was not awarded stuck down there at the 12 yard line instead of, you know, possibly getting the ball at the 20. That's right. I still think that's a pretty important play. If we go back and somehow this game comes down to a field goal opportunity by the uh, Raptors to pull this off. Well, and what the Raptors don't have time to do is run the ball down the field. They're going to have to get some chunk plays here, barring a. A massive punt return on here. 
I'm sure the Raptors are going to probably come after this kick. So the Eagles will be punting from inside their end zone. Things you're going to want to watch here. Good snap. Yep. A safety doesn't <laughs> make you uh, score update. Nolensville just tied Centennial 14 yeah. 14. It's a mascot. So there you go. Plenty snap time. kick is up. Floats in the air. And oh. it's caught by Hubbard. In Independence territory. Coach Hubbard caught the ball with his entire body. There was no way he was letting that hit the ground. And so now the Raptors are going to take over on the 45 yard line. Coach, with these Williamson County schools, they may already be in field goal range. I mean, these kickers yeah, yeah. are getting coached by professional kickers, NFL kickers. And so here you go, 45-yard line, 220 on the clock. We'll see what the uh, strategy is. Balboa, keep in mind, has put it on the ground a couple times already. Hubbard in motion. Quick pitch to Hubbard. He's going to go to the sideline after a gain of about five. And he runs out of bounds. Stops the clock. So they took a whole six seconds to run that play. You know, got to give credit to Max Kempel over there, number 13 for the Raptors, the receiver. He did a pretty good job blocking to get the Raptors, uh, you know, positive yardage around that jet sweep. So 2.14 officially on the clock. Balboa takes the snap. Quick pass inside to Hubbard, and he's going to be tackled right after he catches it for about a gain of a yard. That's not a good call there as the clock is going to continue to run, and Coach, it's third and six. Well, you know, Coach Chester, I think he realizes there's two minutes left. They practice this all the time. There's no need to panic. Well, and you can see Hester throwing in the signals. So Balboa up, crowds loud, so crowd noise may be coming into a factor here for this Raptor offense. Balboa looking, design quarterback oh, run. Oh, they got He's it. He's not going to get it. He's going to be tackled. Coach, it's going to be fourth and about two and a half. Blaze so, Katina right there. Blaze Katina coming up big. Coach, when they had the designed run, I was thinking, oh, he's got it. And he gets wrapped up quickly. Here's our ball game. This is ball game right here, fourth and three for the Raptors. Young quarterback here, sophomore. Yep. Controlling the offense. Can't get a delay of game. Balboa for the game. Throws it across the middle. Hubbard, Mr. Reliable, catches it. Coach, they're in right in the middle yeah. in field goal range. 56 seconds remaining. Clock is stopped. Yeah, but they got to move the chains. Now the clock's going to run. The clock's rolling. And I think they're in pretty good shape. The handoff to Dallin. Oh, he's Dallin still going. On his feet. Coach, this is not good for Independence. He's not down at, at about the four or five yard line. Does Independence let them score? Independence only has one timeout left. If I'm Hester, I'd run the clock down here as much as I can and then just clock it here with a spike. How about take a knee? How about don't run anything? And there he goes. I called it better, Coach. I said he was going to clock it here. So 25, almost 26 seconds. But you're right. You could take a knee here, let the clock run down to almost nothing, and then... Again, clock it, and that's gonna, that would bring up fourth down with a, a chip shot field goal. But keep in mind, he got they blocked. blocked the last one. An extra point, which is about where the ball is right now. That's right. So no guarantees, but Pace is in the backfield here. The handoff to Pace, he's not going to get it. It's a fumble. Oh, oh we got some. Do they? They're calling him down. The and official saying he's down. But the clock's running still. He strikes the ball. So credit to the officials there to organize what was chaos for a minute. Get the ball set. 
quickly the official was on top of it. Initially, yeah, the, they said See it right fumble. here. He was down on the ground. He basically just took the ball out and said. So here it is, 6.2 left in the game. Ravenwood with a 15-yard correction, 21-yard field goal attempt. And there oh, they the ice the ice. kicker. The ice. <laughs> ice in the kicker. So there's the final timeout. You can't take them with you, and in this game they didn't. Both teams used their full complement of timeouts. And so Coach Stidham makes them think about this here. It's going to be about a 21-yard try. And, of course, as we mentioned, they blocked an extra point. So as we mentioned earlier, the latest scores we had, Franklin down 7-13 to to Summit, Nolansville and Centennial going down to the wire, tied at 14. We'll check those scores here in a minute. So here we go for the ball game. Ravenwood lines up for a 21-yard try from the 10-yard line. Straight up and down middle here. The full block will be on for these Eagles. Snap is back. Kick is up, and that's dead right in the middle. Kick is up and good. 3.8 left. That's going to be 16-14. So for the moment, the Raptors come storming back in the fourth to take the lead, and the Independence crowd just stunned. Just the – just the – it just never seemed like a panic by the Raptors at all. Nope. Well, and he, to his credit, Balboa, being a young player, he came up with calm, big yeah. a huge dart to Hubbard down the middle, split the safety. And, Coach, the defenses for both sides have been pretty solid tonight. And so huge strike down the middle got him to the five-yard line. And, I mean, and let's face it, if you put a Raptor kicker on, on the 10-yard line, you know, 11 out of 10 times they're going to hit that. You know, he got it one block. But that's just easy money for a kicker from Ravenwood. Well, and, you know, that blocked extra point was probably one of the better things that could have happened to Ravenwood. That They really made sure they focused right there on making sure they, they, they had the to block. stay hungry right there, yeah. right? And they had to get down the field you know, to where they could get Sometimes you get lazy, right, as the extra point team. You're like, oh, he's, he's, he's 100% for the year. We really don't have to do anything. Well, and let's see if we see uh, something out of the uh, Boston College playbook here. So it's going to be a pooch kick. So where's Kevin Dyson when you need him? You better get rid of it. And he's going to be tackled, and that's the game. Coach, another good game of the week wow. here. WCTV, Ravenwood spoils the home crowd here with your final on a last-second field goal. Ravenwood 16, Independence 14. Independence will drop to 3-3. Three and three. Ravenwood will improve to five and one. Everybody, I'm Doug Capella. Paul Brees, we're going to sign off. Have a good weekend, folks.